Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, today's webinar hosted by Variato. We're going to give people just a, a couple of minutes to uh, sign in, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on a very popular topic right now, uh, effectively managing the shift to remote work. I'm Dr. Christine Zwakor, um, your moderator for today's conversation. A little bit of background about me uh, real quick. I've been in the cybersecurity industry for about a decade now. I've learned, um, I earned a PhD in security engineering. I've led numerous security functions at large companies like United Airlines uh, before taking on my current role as the founder and uh, CEO of Cyber Pop-Up, which is a next generation uh, cybersecurity services company. Joining the conversation today, we also have Pete Norse here with us. Pete is the Chief Marketing Officer at Variato, so he has a wealth of experience in the technology marketing space and has focused in cybersecurity for almost 20 years now. Welcome, Pete, and happy Friday. Thanks, Christine. Glad to be here. Awesome. We also have uh, Suzanne Perrant joining us later on. Um, Suzanne is the Director of North America Sales and the Worldwide Partnership Program at Variato. She has 15 years of experience across numerous domains within Fortune 500 companies, including working with HP and Dell uh, out in Europe. And so be sure to stick around and hear more from her as well. Welcome, uh, Suzanne. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Now, before we get started um, here, I think this is a great time to just get a quick pulse from our attendees uh, as well. So we have a quick poll um, that I'll put up here um, in just a second. And we want to know um, how many people are joining us from home today? Uh, so I'm guessing and hoping that's most of us, but I also uh, know that there are plenty of people around the world still going into the office, of course, and still required to work on site in certain industries. And so don't be shy if, if that's you. Um, so we'll take a quick look at the results here. Oh, wow, and that's even uh, higher than I, I expected, 82% working from home and 18% um, not. And so 
uh, just imagine that that answer three to four months ago would have been around you know 15 to 20 percent at best and so just an example of the huge shift that we're seeing and of course highlights why today's topic is so important and so during this session uh, first we'll take a look at past and current pandemics and how those have played out um, as we all know, remote, remote work has absolutely skyrocketed right now. And so we're gonna dig into that demand a little bit more. Then we'll talk through the many security risks every company should be prepared to address right now, including potential impacts to uh, work productivity and things like that. And throughout you'll hear many tips for, um, for managing the shift to remote work as well. We'll aim to make this as interactive as we can, of course. And so if you have questions, please don't hesitate to share them in the Q&A window and I'll keep an eye out for that. And we'll try to get through as many of them as we can in the time that we have here. Um, and so jumping right in, um, this isn't the first pandemic or major incident to shut businesses down and to shed light on the importance of uh, technology and security in preparation um, for response to a pandemic. And so, Pete, can you kick us off by sharing your experience? You know, have you dealt with prior, you know, catastrophes or pandemics? And if so, what lessons did you learn and how is this different? Yeah, good question, Christine. Um, yeah, so the, the the last real big pandemic, nationwide pandemic, was the influenza pandemic back in 1918. And though I've been in the industry for a while, I was not around for that. But uh, just to put it in perspective, the, the devastation that that did um, without us having the science that we have today for social distancing and things that can afford it, there were about 500 million people worldwide that got it, which was at that time about a third of the world's population and over almost 700,000 deaths just in the US alone. And then more recently, the, the next thing that shut down the US was, was uh, World War II. Um, and again, I wasn't around for that either. Uh, but there are some things that have had both national and regional impacts that have really shut down business. Um, the one that I've experienced at a national level was 9-11, of course, um, you know, for, at least a week or so, uh, our world was th thrown into total chaos that went on, you know, into the Gulf War and um, had a lot of implications. Um, on a regional level, things like hurricanes, tornadoes, blizzards, those can all shut down businesses for a period of time. We're, our offices are in South Florida, so um, I'm from Boston. We're used to dealing with blizzards um, and can handle those pretty well, but most places cannot handle things like hurricanes and no one can handle tornadoes, obviously. Um, but we do have a preparedness plan uh, for hurricanes that we go over once a year. We have, um, you know, hurricane preparedness captains on what to do, um, redundancy. So businesses have prepared for um, different types of, we call them catastrophes, um, things that have massive business interruption. Um, just nothing really like this on a national level for an extended period. Yeah, I um, I completely agree. I know for me, never in my career have I dealt with an impact like this, and so truly new and um, uncharted territory uh, for you know I think many business leaders and and companies out there today. Now, let's talk about the current state of the uh, ongoing pandemic. So, globally, uh, more than two million known cases have been. Uh, reported across over 200 countries, over 140,000 uh, deaths attributed to COVID-19, and over half a million people have recovered thus far. And I want to pause there for a moment and just say, you know, to anyone joining who may have been directly or indirectly impacted by this, especially from a health, a health and safety standpoint, we're sending positive vibes and thoughts your way. Having lost my own uncle to the virus a couple of weeks ago, I know that this is a tough time for many people and simple kindness and um, just positive thoughts can truly make a difference. Uh, now, beyond health and safety, the blow to the economy has also been very real. Airlines have taken a pretty big hit. Unemployment is up and a significant drop in the stock market. And so can you tell us more about the impacts of the current pandemic from your view, Pete, and uh, have, how have you seen businesses impacted and how have your customers been impacted? Yeah, and I guess I should I should correct my previous state, statement I was talking about on a national level. You know, the pandemic, obviously, that's the name. It, it, it's a it's a global 
situation. So it has far reaching impacts for everything from supply to demand um, all across the world. So we're not in this alone. Um, and again, that's, that's pretty unique. Um, so the thing that we've been seeing, we've get, been getting that literally thousands of companies coming to us over the last few weeks because we what, what Variato does um, is provide software that can provide remote monitoring and, and analytics of behavior and so forth. So that, that helps companies get a handle on what's going on with employees um, that are in remote locations. And um, we'll get into a little bit more of that later. And by the way, I did want to mention, we didn't have it on the agenda at the at the beginning, and that was a mistake that um, we are at, at the end of the presentation. We're going to do about a, a 10 or 15 minute um, demonstration, and Suzanne is going to show us um, one of Variato's um, uh, solutions. So, um, in, in terms of the, like I said, we've had thousands of companies that have are coming to us, and it, it's most of the most of the the comments are the same, and these are from companies that are are small businesses down the street in your local hometown to major international corporations. And the, the common theme is, you know, we just sent all of our workforce home. We don't really know what any of them are doing or how any of them are doing. You know, are they doing great? You know, we're calling them, we're using Skype and Zoom, you know, occasionally here and there, we're trying to keep in contact, but we really don't know how the business is going. Um, you know, who needs help, who doesn't, what's going on. Um, and if people are doing anything or are people just so freaked out they're they're not working, um, we just don't have any visibility. So visibility is, is the first really big thing that we're hearing from customers. And then I think the other big thing in, on, a, on a more macro level um, in terms of business is the level of uncertainty. All the things that we've dealt with, um, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, you know, we know that it's there's a there's a period of a day, a couple days, a week, a month where things are gonna be massively disrupt disrupted. Right now, we're all in a state of, we don't really know. Um, you know, started with a few weeks, now it's a couple months, probably through the summer, schools are being, you know, it's, it's literally changing every day. And so we don't really know how long, you know, it's gonna to be till we get back to normal. And then the question is, what is the new normal? And what are the long-term impacts of this, both from a healthcare perspective, but also from a business perspective and how our, how our business is going to learn and change and adapt from this. Yeah, I agree. Tons of tons of uncertainty and I'm sure everybody is kind of anxious and, and uh, looking forward to learning more about how this continues to play out. Now, this uh, shift to remote work that you you know, already kind of talked about a little bit. This happened very quickly and companies simply were not ready. A recent uh, white paper by Variato noted that prior to last month, up to 25% of Americans were working remotely for about one day per week. And now due to social distancing um, guidance, of course, uh, some companies have now taken 100% of their workforces remotely full time. And we saw in the poll earlier, even um, you know, over 80% of people on this call are joining from home as well. And so um, as a result, you know, there's these shifts going on in the industry. Last month, Microsoft reported a 500% increase in usage of their virtual collaboration tools. Zoom became the number one downloaded app in the Apple Store and a very attractive target for attackers, as we've seen in the headlines recently. Um, the search phrase, what is VPN, saw an 81% uptick as well. And so um, I'm wondering if this sentiment reigns true with our attendees as well. And so um, I want to just take a moment to do another quick, um, another quick poll and get everyone's thoughts on uh, how, um, how people are feeling out there as well. So um, on a scale of one to five, you know, how prepared would you say your company was for this shift? And while you take a few seconds to answer that, I'll share, you know, even one of my friends um, was venting to me this past uh, weekend about how, you know, she's, uh, her company, you know, was forced to go uh, fully remote for the most part. And so she's doing all of her work right now from an iPhone because her desktop at work, um, of course, she couldn't take home. Though I've also heard that some employers are asking their um, employees to take care of their desktop home even. And so, um, so yeah, it's, it's clear that a lot of companies were, were not ready. Um, okay, so I'm going to put the results back up here. And let's see. Yeah, so it looks like there's a there's a pretty distributed um, 
distributed uh, opinion, but a lot of a lot of fours and fives for for sure. It looks like the majority. So um, very much in line with what we've um, very much in line with what we've we've seen so far. And so, um, Pete, why do you think companies were so unprepared for this? Well, I, I think it's the, it's the simple fact that you know, it's something that none of us have ever experienced before. When none of us lived through, I, I don't think anyone on this call lived through World War II or a pandemic or anything else. So, you know, you, you, it's, it's human nature to prepare, you know, for things that you are familiar with and can foresee. Um, maybe we should have foreseen this better. Um, and I think everyone's going to be much more aware. And I think that that really goes to um, the, the, the state of, of what, what's being created right now. I mean, I think we've all been thrust into kind of a great business experiment. You know, this is kind of a you know, business school, you know, kind of experiment uh, work workshop thing. All right, what if everyone had to go home? What then? So basically, every company, whether they had embraced work work remotely or hadn't, um, and fought a tooth and nail, everyone's been thrust into it. Everyone's testing it literally right now and trying to figure out how it's going to work with their in their company, and. So there's going to be successes and failures. Hopefully people who are, are struggling with it right now are going to, you know, get better at it and feel more comfortable a month from now and get better at working with their employees and, and making things work smoothly. Um, because if they do, and I think everyone's going to see that the, the, if two things, one is the employees, if a good percentage of them really enjoy and thrive working in that remote location, that's good for employee morale and, um, uh, you know, and productivity. Second thing is, if you can reduce your office space by 30% or 80%, well, that's a huge cost savings for companies. So, you know, there's there could be very long-term ramifications in how America and the world works um, moving forward, and that it just may and we may end up being have forced move into a, a much more distributed workforce. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think that makes total total sense. Now, one of the biggest um, one of the biggest areas that there's a lot of buzz around um, is the security risk associated with working from home, and one of the the, the key topics here today as well. And so, um, I want to touch on a, a a couple of things here that people should be paying attention to. I think the first is that people should be paying attention to securing both connections and devices. Uh, when people are now doing all of this work, especially work with sensitive information, and you mentioned this, Pete, um, earlier when you were talking about some of the concerns you're hearing from your customers as well, um, when they're working at home on their, you know, passwordless, insecure Wi-Fi connections, that adds risk. Or when their kids are at home downloading free malware-riddled games online or using the same home network as your employees, that adds risk. Or when your family member is falling for the many coronavirus related phishing emails that are out there disguised as you know, information on a financial stimulus package or prevention tips when it's really malware, you know, that adds risk as well. In the same way that malicious hackers move laterally through organizations as they attack, is the same way that um, these attackers can move from device to device. Uh, to device in a home network. And so when it comes to Wi-Fi connections and, and things like that, like it's not just your company that you have to worry about at this point now, it's this extended family network that becomes a concern. And so I mentioned before that the search for what is VPN uh, saw a, a surge and people who are uh, searching for that are heading in the right direction. If you're unfamiliar, um, a VPN or virtual private network provides an encrypted connection to a resource when you're um, accessing that through an insecure network like uh, public internet if you're in a cafe or something or in this case if you're at, at home and it masks activity so that um, unauthorized people can't see sensitive data and so um, I think one of the you know best things or fundamental things to do is to get a good VPN solution if you don't have one already so that people can connect securely. Um, and then I think also 
also providing guidance on Wi-Fi security and other tips that employees can use at home. And so doing things like including recommendations on setting strong passwords and changing default names on routers and credentials, um, enabling encryption where they can. I'm all about employee awareness campaigns. Um, and so I, I always say I can talk about that um, all day um, and I'm happy to provide more resources or, or guidance if, if anybody needs that on the awareness uh, front. But um, do what you can to help people understand how to protect their devices and connections. Um, I think another element of this is uh, bring your own uh, device. It adds a, an additional layer of, of issues. Um, you know, I had mentioned earlier my my friend who is now doing all of her work from her iPhone because she couldn't take her her computer. And so some employees have been forced to use their personal devices to connect to corporate networks, or maybe they aren't even connecting to the corporate network. Some have just copied the files from um, the computers that they needed on USBs and put the data on their own devices, for example. And so these devices, when they're unmanaged, they um, usually lack basic security controls. So basic things like antivirus, having firewalls, updated patching, um, these are all things that uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to, quite honestly, especially on personal devices. And, uh, you know, that also leads to a third point as well. The vulnerability of data is huge. There's almost no restrictions at that point. People can take the data, you know, they can take what they want, they can send it where they want, whether it's intentional or unintentional. And if, again, you're not managing that device, um, how do you even know the data has been leaked or sent somewhere or anything and so you get a call one day that your you know customer database is on sale on the dark web um, you know similar to what zoom experienced not too long ago um, another case you know whether it's BYOD or a corporate uh, a device um, if an unencrypted laptop is lost or stolen uh, or an unencrypted device is, is lost the data is out there um, and so to address those gaps, I think, you know, uh, encrypting devices is important. Uh, monitoring activity, especially what's getting exported through, you know, USB ports on external drives, all of that, just to get a sense of, of where your, your data is um, and where it's going as people continue to, to uh, move around so much. Um, if employees are using their own devices, make sure that you have a plan for security. This will look different for um, every company and there isn't a simple um, answer quite honestly but if employees are using their own devices you have to be able to um, you know pay attention to and have a plan of action for how you you know uh, keep track of what data is out there and and make sure that you're um, keeping security as a priority and then lastly from a fraud standpoint um, authenticating users can become a challenge and without the right controls in place um, especially when you're trying to set up uh, this remote access or enable your workforce under pressure uh, like many companies are feeling right now because it's not like companies had the time to you know create a robust strategy for how they're going to do this people are trying to move very quickly and when you move very quickly without planning there's more opportunity for error and so some people are giving employees access to everything on a network which is another risk right uh, people should have access to the least amount of resources required to do their job otherwise there's a greater chance of things like fraud um, and additional security risks stemming from uh, trusted insiders and trusted employees. And so I know I've said a lot there, but to sum things up, you know, VPN is really important. Uh, looking into uh, encryption, making sure that devices are encrypted so that even if they are lost or stolen or, or, or anything, that the data is at least inaccessible. Uh, monitoring activity of, of users and having that visibility, uh, using strong access control measures um, to make sure that people don't have remote access to things that they shouldn't. And again, if people are using their own devices, get a security plan, a security strategy in place to um, address that um, entire uh, situation, which again will look different for every company. Um, and then lastly, just training your employees on what they need to do specifically to protect uh, themselves because of course people play a huge uh, role in all of this and there's so many little things that uh, people can do on their own um, if they're just educated and, and know what to do in order to, to help a little bit more. Um, so again, I know I've said a lot there, but Pete, is there anything else you want to add? 
Yeah, I just wanted to touch a little bit more on the human element. I, we have a, a kind of a mixed crowd of seen um, that have signed up for the webinar today. Some people are security um, pros and some are HR professionals. And I, I think that the human element is kind of where those two those two things come together. Um, what we've had is, you know, people were fit, have physically been disengaged from their workplace, right? Everyone's at home. No one's seeing their other employees. They're not seeing their office anymore. Um, an HR term of disengagement, which meaning that you're mentally disengaging from the company. Um, you know, it, it stands to reason as people are physically disengaged and not as involved every minute of the day with the, their their physical surroundings being their company, um, that the risk of of mental disengagement increases. So how, how do we handle that? Um, we, just a, um, one of the th things probably a lot of people realize that a lot of the data breaches that happen, um, about 60% now um, happen from internal, uh, from insiders, whether that's an employee, a contractor, an ex-employee, these are the people that have access to it. And unfortunately, um, not everything always goes above board and there, there are problems. Sometimes it's accidental uh, and sometimes it's malicious. So the ability to understand what people are doing out there when, when there's no supervision, um, when one of the biggest risks is when people decide to leave a company and they often will take data with them to probably a competitor, um, these are big security risks, and, but they tie directly to HR as well. So there's the, a lot of the technical factors that you mentioned, but then you have the, the human and psychological factors that are it's putting additional stress and strain, both from an HR and a security perspective. Absolutely. You know, the human element of security is like my favorite topic, so I could not um, agree more. Um, you know, keeping up with this uh, theme of the human factor, um, I wanted to, you know, touch on this uh, really quickly because, you know, um, uh, I think this is important to, you know, dive into a little bit more. Who's thriving and who's struggling in this era? Well, I think if you look back at you know what companies have been doing before, a lot of companies had people that were road warriors, people that worked from home. A lot of times they were sales teams, um, and a lot of these people that that did really well at this and have continued to, to work remotely for years, they had certain traits, right, that that made them successful in this kind of isolated world. First of all, they had self-discipline. They were self-motivated to get the job done. They were good at self-direction. They didn't need constant supervision. Um, that they had a suitable work at home environment. They had a little, you know, back bedroom somewhere where dogs and kids and everything weren't crazy and on top of you. Um, and also that these were people that did not really thrive on that um, interaction that happens between colleagues in the office. Some people love that. They thrive on that. It's fantastic. And when they get thrown into an isolated environment and they're working by themselves, you know, that's not good for them. They, they don't enjoy that. They really hate um, working from home. And then the other issue is management. Um, you know, all of a sudden you have all of these managers, supervisors who are um, supervising remote employees. They're remote themselves and they don't have any experience in this. So, you know, when you have all of these things coming together, you're going to have people who are, not everyone has all those characteristics we just talked about. Some people do, some people don't. So how do you distinguish who's thriving out there because a lot of time you know a lot of the studies have shown when people uh, are in or of an isolated circumstance not distracted they're actually more productive um, I was at a webinar uh, yesterday and um, uh, Dr. Ben Weber was saying that um, people are actually spending their work days about 20 percent longer in the last few weeks because they've been working from home you know things in the day interrupt them kids come well not come home from school but kids interrupt or family, whatever, and they take care of it, they end up working later at night. So there's a lot of changes that are happening. And the uh, the ability to understand who's doing well and who's not is pretty tricky from a remote standpoint if you don't have anything to help you along that road. Yeah, I um, I, I agree. I think engagement is, is super important here. And I think that's a good segue into, you know, talking about productivity a little bit more. So numerous studies, um, of course, have linked employee engagement to higher sales, profitability, 
and more within companies. And you know, I believe, and you, you mentioned this uh, earlier too, that engaged employees are simply more productive, you know, whether it's working at home and, and getting extra hours in or whatever the case may be, um, but that's how you get better results. And so should companies be concerned with productivity um, at this point? And uh, how do you approach managing employees who may be abusing this, this newfound freedom, so to speak? Yeah, well, in the pre-coronavirus world, um, you know, companies should have been, I mean, everyone, every company should be um, concerned with productivity, although there are some pretty startling facts out there that it's just under three hours that an average person, back, back when they were working in the office, back in normal times, just under three hours, the people were actually productive in an eight-hour day. And uh, there were a lot of different things that took up their time online, things like websites, social media, just chatting with coworkers, um, even searching for new jobs. <clears throat> but now in the coronavirus era, um, we have a whole new set of distractions. So, um, you know, what are, what are folks doing while they're at home? Um, you, as you can see, there's a lot of different things that, uh, that are, are uh, vying for their attention. <clears throat> And when we're looking at success or a failure of a company in general, you know, productivity is always at the core of it. And right now, with the shutdown of the economy worldwide, um, a lot of companies are hurting. And now if you add on top of that, productivity drops and disengagement that we've been talking about, I mean, that really can be a, a recipe for, for death of a company. If a company's not able to understand what's going on, they don't have the vis visibility, and they can't manage it effectively. If they can, they can adapt and make changes and get people the help they need. If they don't, there's a lot of things that are, are fighting against them. Yeah, I, uh, I, I agree as well. Um, so I know uh, productivity is hard to, to mention. This is another thing that you had touched on a little bit, but how are your customers handling that piece? Um, yeah, productivity measurement is is difficult, um, and that's really where technology can come in and help, and, and what what people come to us for and our customers utilize it for. Um, so we do a number of different things. So the the way the technology works is that we're on people's Macs or PCs, and it doesn't make a difference whether it's in the office or at home. Um, and our technology monitors everything that's going on. On the person's piece, on the person's PC, um, we use a, a combination of monitoring, analytics, um, artificial intelligence, and even psycholinguistics. And what psycholinguistics are, um, this is in our enterprise product, Cerebral. Um, this is the study of understanding people's psychological shifts, and in determining that through their language. So that's been applied and in, integrated into our technology. And in this case, it's how people use language, for instance, within an email. And if someone starts to disengage from the company, their writing style actually changes. And we're always on the lookout for that. And the idea is you want to you want to head that off right when it begins, right? Um, someone just got a bad review, and all of a sudden, you know, they 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 start disengaging from the company. Now, if that becomes a trend, at some point. You know, you want to. You may want to step in. You may want to take a look at it. Are there other indicating factors? For instance, has all the, also their productivity dropped? The number of number of hours they're using the accounting application per out per day. So those that's the kind of visibility that Variato can give you. You know, it's a simple report that shows, you know, um, who is spending the most time. You know, we have 25 people in the accounting department. How you know who's spending the most time you know working the hardest with that with the accounting application all day? On the other hand, you know we'll flag flag you if someone's using the accounting application in the morning, but then watching Netflix all afternoon. Um, they work a half a day. Okay, maybe that's something you need to address. Um, also, who needs training? Someone might be working hard, but you you see that the the results just aren't there. You know it could be a situation where they were thriving in the office because they had a friend sitting next to them and. You know, three, four, five times a day when they get stuck on something, that ask their friend who would help them through, a more experienced person. That person doesn't sit next to them anymore. So now that person's really struggling. How do we overcome that? How do we even know that? And, this, and with having visibility is, is really the key. And then you can also look at it from a group perspective. You know, is a whole team struggling? Well, why is that? Do they not have the right tools? 
or maybe it's the, their supervisor or manager is, is not, not adept at managing a remote workforce and maybe they need some training. So really understanding you know, how it's affecting groups, management, and the individuals, having that visibility is key to being able to, uh, to manage and have the metrics uh, to, you know, to build the organization so it's running effectively and productively. And I think with that, that's just kind of a high level overview. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring, cause I see we're just past uh, 1130 here. I wanna get Suzanne on. So Suzanne is actually gonna, Suzanne Perrant is our director of worldwide channels. And she is going to give us a demo of uh, Variato's vision product um, and show you a little bit about how it can give you visibility into both productivity and security uh, for remote workers. So I'll turn it over to you, Suzanne. Thank you very much, Pete. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of um, pointers on how one of our solutions can bring you that visibility that we've talked about. Um, but I also want to start with what my current experience is, because I'm one of those employees in an organization that has employees that work remote and that haven't managed employees remotely as well. So all those things, uh, these are live experiences for you. And what I've done is I've literally kind of put in place a way to have um, scheduled meetings, daily briefings, if I can refer to those. And this way I can know uh, what's going on. But what what is really good with the platform that I'm going to show you right now is to give you the visibility and understand exactly what they're doing, when they're doing it, how long they're doing it for. So the ability to see that really, really quickly, and this is what this platform gives you, and what I'm showing you is a product called Variato Vision. This is our cloud-based full SaaS version, gives you total visibility on all your organizations, uh, each group can represent a different location. So of course you're gonna you still continue to have remote employees, but you may also have bring in contractors. And each of those would have a different work schedule. So having a work schedule set up, and I think Pete mentioned earlier that people work a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon, and then a little bit at night. So the standard work schedule is no longer the same. So you want to try to understand how much time they're actually spending. Understanding what you need to look for and what that difference really means. So in a quick view for, for you as a manager to look at the data is to look at either an individual. Overall, you can rank each one of these individuals based on a productivity score. So we've built a productivity score and ranked the individuals. Uh, when uh, you track an employee's work hours, this is quickly changeable, but everybody is part of a group, therefore you can determine what kind of hours each employee has. As you go in a quick view, because everything has to be very quick, you don't want to spend a lot of time looking here, you just want to be aware of what's going on. So total login time, how much time are they actually spending logged in? Because they're logging in at different times during the day, what does that represent in log time? And that's a, a good measurement, but the next measurement, which is their work time, um, and this is on a week. Earlier, Pete mentioned two hours, just under three hours a day, they're actually working at least from a technology point of view, that we're measuring. So here we're giving you those numbers. We're giving you the total number of hours that they're active. Well, that may be not enough either because you want to know out of those 37 hours, of those active hours, what are they doing? So productivity is a combination of what they're doing, what applications they're using, how much time they're spending on each one of them, what websites they're viewing, and then really trying to see in a percentage. So over here, we're seeing that of the 37 hours, they're idle. So half their 37 hours of log time is idle. The other half is divided yet into three more categories, which is productive, unproductive, and then neutral. And I'll quickly show you what that is in a second. 
But that's just a quick view of each of your employees. When you move over to the right, you see the timeline. So now we see the total hours of each one of those activities. So that blue space was 25% of that time. What more information do you need from that? You literally can now drill into each one of those days and list what those applications were. So that gives you a quick view of where they spend their time, when they started, when they shut down, what they were, were oh, look at this, they're playing poker. Um, oh, and they're on Facebook. So this is just a quick view of any employee, but we've already said that their work hours are not static. It's not nine to five anymore. So you just need to understand a little bit more about what's going on. When you talk about productivity, so productivity and how we measure productivity is really based on each industry's identifying applications or websites that are considered productive. So in a quick capable um, change, you can make ADP a productive application for that employee if they're in an administrative organization or accounting administration. So again, back to grouping your employees based on what they do and identifying what those applications that are running are uh, used to calculate the productivity ratio or productivity score. Um, other applications like Plants and Zombies, unless you're a gaming development company, that would not be considered a productive application and most likely not neutral either. So those are pieces of information that you can really kind of determine. Salesforce, uh, HubSpot, any of those or CRM would all be considered productive applications and then would be considered. So it's a super simple way to kind of group what it's important to you, your industry, different industries. If you're a call center, if you're in healthcare, what applications do you use? What websites do you visit? And each one of those can be flagged. Put on. Yes, sure, absolutely. I just, want, I just wanted to jump in and let people know, because there's a huge list, obviously, of applications and websites that you're, you're showing there. The system automatically will populate those based on what all your employees are doing. So every time they go to a new website, it will pop it on there as neutral. So at the beginning of the day, you can go on. In the beginning, it's obviously uh, you know more making a decision on what you consider productive or unproductive. But as time goes on, um, you're just dealing with a few new things after that first week or so, and you just you know, mm -hmm. pro productive, non-productive, or neutral. So right. you have control. Exactly. Yep, absolutely. And that was a big thing. I take calls all day, more calls than ever in the last two weeks. Feels like two months worth of calls and partners and customers because I do also manage the inside sales team. And I get calls from the partners and their clients as well as a team. And the first, first, first thing is what are my employees doing? Where are they doing it? How much time are they spending doing it? And can you tell me? I've got too many logs. I can see that they're using the website, but I can never see exactly how much time they're actually using and where they're working. New employees, everybody's got new employees and then all of a sudden they're sent home. How do you measure what they do and what's their training? So you can use some of this to also understand where they're training and help them work remotely. The, um, the, the, just real quick, so essentially this is only one type of view. You can see that you have chart views, so I'm just gonna drop in at the chart view here. I'm not gonna go over them all, and we can certainly uh, give you a more depth presentation and capabilities, but every one of these dashboards are really yours to decide how you wanna see them. And it gives you a quick, uh, a quick capability of identifying the productive users versus the most productive users and then unproductive just as a click of a view. Uh, there's tons of reports, tons of uh, dashboards you can add. So without going into a lot of details, this gives you an idea of how those things can be set up really quickly. You can see all your users, you can see just your groups. Um, one other thing is that uh, we didn't really mention a lot of, but was mentioned in terms of the devices being moved around. Some of this particular this particular platform has also the ability to do some uh, D 
DLP, some blocking, as well as some tracking of where the devices are. And if you absolutely need to delete a device's content, that's also something that can be done. So there's a lot of things on this platform that I didn't, advise, that I didn't mention, but I wanted you to see that how quickly you can move through some of these. And the last piece, maybe alerts, we talked about security and security is one of those things that says, well, what do I want to be alerted on? Um, certain keywords, uh, certain websites, certain amount of time spent on certain websites. So all these things we track, we report. We also have screenshots. This goes, I could go on and on. There's three types of screenshots and each screenshot can be specific to an application or to a website or to an alert. So all these things. Oh, and one thing I forgot to say, people bring their computers home from the office or people don't. When they don't have equipment, they need a device. I, I, I believe we, we heard earlier that somebody is using their iPhone. Well, that iPhone or, or that uh, device is actually potentially reaching the terminal server. So managing and monitoring users using the terminal server model as well, or RDS, which is remote desktop capabilities, or tracking all devices that are using cloud storage of a company. And I, I, of course, I would put all storage and all files in a cloud storage as controlled by the organization and give access to only that location. I can go on and on. I was supposed to try to hold myself to that 10 to 15 minutes borderline, I think. So, um, <laughs> Christina or Pete, is there anything else you'd like me to add? Um, what, I just want to add one thing I wanted to add that, and while you're looking at this, I mean, there's an amazing amount of data that we, we can capture on basically everything that happens on every endpoint for everybody, if you want to, but you don't have to do that. You have complete control over who's monitored and within each group of who they are, what you're actually monitoring. So it's you, you really have total control of that. You may not care what websites they go on. Um, you may only want to look and see, you know, um, from a productivity standpoint, how many hours a day are they using the accounting application? That's all. With what else they do, I don't care. Other people may want to see more and understand more what the what the people are doing. From a security side, you know, usually it's it's a more in depth look at what people are, you know, what people you're uh, monitoring and what you're monitoring for. But if you start to feel suspicious or the system flags you that there's something unusual that this person is doing, you could then increase the monitoring on that person, increase screenshots, things like that, because it may be a situation where they're stealing intellectual property or credit card numbers, and you're going to need, you know, screenshots to prove that um, with, to either HR or even in legal matters. So there's, there's multiple ways to use the system, but the bottom line is you have complete control from both uh, an HR or a securities perspective. Perfect. And we, we've had a couple of questions come through that I want to try to, to um, get through here as well while we have some time. Um, one question that has come in is, can you add applications to the list in case you don't have them already in, in, in your solution? Right. So the beauty is that you don't need to worry about it because it'll populate itself as a new application is installed. So right now it's not something that you can you can freely add but it'll add itself and it'll stay there ongoing yeah as soon as anybody flag. uses an application or a website will automatically get added into that list and then you would flag it as a productive or unproductive you know like spotify would be neutral in my mind of course <laughs> okay <laughs> so yeah that, that makes sense um, another question we've had come in is, does this software need to be installed on the user's device? And if a user oh. is um, using like BYOD, um, would this need to, would this work for them or does it need to be installed on their personal device? Right. Um, I'd like to just make a statement on that because my device is my device, therefore monitoring me on my personal computer is not something that I would recommend. Any device that is used to access the corporate computer or devices or file servers, you would monitor that. If you're providing equipment to the employee, to the employee, then absolutely every 
device would have an agent, that agent would collect the data. And I'm just showing on my screen right now some of the points or data points or data types specifically that we monitor and that is collected and sent to the server. Yeah, and let me just add in there, you know, as we talked about all throughout the, the, the webinar, um, the world has changed, right? And so in BYD has always been a, a, tough, uh, a tough pill for security folks to swallow, but it is the reality in a lot of places. We'd always suggest, you know, first of all, anytime you're doing this to talk to, you know, your, your legal to make sure, you know, things are, are smooth and cool, um, especially with anything BYOD. But, you know, it's probably not unreasonable moving forward, especially if this is a, a part of, of how the company is going to be operating now, um, that any device that's going to be connected in will have to have monitoring. Now, you can have your own device. But we're just not going to give you access with your personal computer into the corporate network that houses, you know, a million customer credit card numbers. You know, we just that's just too big of a security risk. If you allow us to put it on there, that's fine. You can use it. So, it's, you know, companies have done it in different ways, but we'd always suggest that, you know, um, we're, we can't advise you in terms of, um, you know, laws, legality, different places um, that, that fall around BYOD. But, you know, you can certainly, you it's in your right to say what and what cannot connect into your corporate network, especially in this new world. Right. And there, and there are companies okay. today that are actually putting in place uh, remote desktop capable so the desktop stays home uh, stays at the office and you remote in so and that's good enough they're literally using the corporate tech resources remotely got it yeah we we have a ton of questions rolling in um, i'm going to try to get through a couple more of them if we can um sure one is uh i think this is more generally speaking as the workforce moves uh, virtually or remote, how can companies use, uh, you know, this technology or, or Variados um, tools in, in general to prepare for termination of employment? And can Variado force log off from the endpoint so nobody can log back in uh, to avoid data loss? So just, you know, I'll just, the, the first part is how do you know if an employee is leaving or has an even intent to leave. And so some of the data that we collect is websites. Those websites, most of the websites are known that are job searching websites. So you create a view that shows all the individuals looking or spending time on a website that's job related. Um, you can then identify a trend or a tendency that there is a specific activity for that employee that are most likely going to occur. Two things are going to occur. You're going to take an action, have a conversation with them to understand why, but you're also going to monitor them a little bit more because now some security issues may occur or some of the data may start moving away and onto a private drive to be shared or sold or brought to where they're going if it's the competition. Uh, for small businesses, a list of customers is pretty valuable. Right now, everybody wants to stay in business. So losing a customer data file uh, is, is a critical point. So those are other things that you can do to start tracking for that. And the other and part. I just wanted to. Yeah, you want to. I was before you move on to the technical part, Susan. I was, uh, it, the other side of that is if you are suspecting that an employee is doing something wrong and you want to terminate them. Um, and yes, our customers utilize our technology all the time for that because it gives them the concrete evidence. So I can't believe how many times people have found out that some of their employees are actually running another business <laughs> during work hours, um, you know, especially if they're remote. Um, and you would actually have all of the data logs, you'd have screenshot um, support. Um, to show exactly what they were doing. It's all time stamped. It's been used in court. Um, it's it's a the perfect defense against wrongful termination suits. Um, you know, our our, our products, uh, I mean uh, the the screenshot evidence and the logs and so forth have been been used by you know hundreds or thousands of our customers in both legal and HR matters. So yeah, and just here this <clears throat> right, and just here in terms of how do you shut them down, well, one of the things is you can actually locate the device for each of the users, recover the files, delete the files, or even find out where they are using a geolocate capability. 
um, and even tracking uh, where that device is or has been. And we can you can lock it down with Vision, correct? So there's that that <clears throat> locking the device. I would just delete the device or delete the content of the device. Uh, a lot of things is managed by the IT administrators on how you actually block the user's right. access to the server. It wouldn't be here so much as the network level. Yeah. Um, I think we, we probably have time for one more uh, question. So I'm going to try to um, make it a good one. Sorry we couldn't get to everybody. There's a couple of questions on mobile that I'll try to sum up into uh, one. Um, the questions are around, uh, can this be installed on mobile devices to monitor those? And in the event, let's say an, em uh, an employee is like, working from multiple devices right is there a way to account for and integrate all of that information into a productivity score so you can see the full picture yes so in fact that is what we do we look at a user's productivity um, we also use the device view so here i've just changed while we were looking while we were uh, reviewing the question is you can have a user view or a device view so an employee may have um, different devices accessing the data on the network differently and everything is managed and viewed and calculated based on on that as well regardless awesome. of how many devices we're using yeah yeah all and right well, oh, oh go with ahead the extra questions christine i think we could um well, we can take those and try to get back to people with answers for the other questions yeah absolutely uh, so yeah, sorry we couldn't get on the webinar. Um, all right, so yeah, tons of tons of great insight. Any final thoughts, Pete, you want to share before we close out? Uh, just that you know, um, I, we know everyone is out there trying to you know figure and work their way through this new world, which we you know looks like it's going to be lasting a lot more than anyone has ever experienced before, and the the new look workforce being that hybrid office home workforce is is looks like it's going to be here to stay so we're help you here to help you through that um, we have a number of different tools that can really help um, in you know providing a metrics driven approach um, and giving that visibility you need to um, make sure productivity is good and, and security is good and and your employees are staying uh, engaged engaged and happy which is the bottom line and productive so um, and i think also uh, i don't know if you mentioned to Christine, but we have a white paper that's uh, here. Maybe you can tell the folks uh, they can download. Yeah, yeah definitely. So um, again, tons of tons of great insight here. So thanks to uh, uh, Pete for, for sharing that. And thanks to uh, Suzanne for the great um, uh, demo here. Um, you can download your free copy of Variato's Remote Work White Paper. Um, it's in the um, handouts or the assets uh, window of your uh, webinar little management console. Um, and if you have any uh, questions uh, at all, feel free to reach out to uh, the team at sales at variato.com. And also, again, sorry we couldn't get to everyone's uh, questions here, um, but we will um, uh, we will be able to, the team will follow up uh, on, on some of those uh, after the fact. So, um, so yeah, if you have any questions, again, please re reach out to sales at variato.com. Uh, stay safe. Thanks so much for joining us and spending the last uh, hour with us, and we hope you um, have a good weekend. That concludes today's webinar.